In this video, we will delve into the intricate anatomy of the nasal pyramid, commonly referred to as the external nose. We'll begin with an introduction to the nasal pyramid. We'll then delve into the detailed structure of the nasal pyramid, examining its unique combination of bony and cartilaginous components. Following the structural analysis, we'll shift our focus to the morphology of the nasal pyramid. Next, we will delve into the vital aspects of the blood and nerve supply of the nasal pyramid. Additionally, we'll discuss the nerve supply, particularly the sensory and motor innovation. Finally, we'll conclude with key takeaways, summarizing the major points discussed. The nasal pyramid, commonly referred to as the external nose, is a prominent osseocartilaginous structure that plays a crucial role in the anatomy of the facial skeleton. Located centrally on the face, it is composed of both bone and cartilage, contributing to its unique shape and strength. Its primary function is to act as a protective barrier for the nasal cavities located behind it, safeguarding them from external harm and injury. Additionally, the nasal pyramid provides essential structural support to the facial features, maintaining the overall balance and symmetry of the face. Its distinct protrusion outward not only adds to the aesthetic appearance of the face but also plays a significant role in the respiratory system, aiding in the inhalation and filtration of air. The shape of the nasal pyramid closely resembles a triangular pyramid, characterized by its specific orientation and well-defined boundaries that contribute to its distinctive form. The inferior surface, or the base of the nasal pyramid, is most easily recognized by the presence of the nostrils. This part is crucial as it marks the entrance to the nasal cavities and plays a vital role in the respiratory function of the nose. The apex, or the root of the nose, is situated near the forehead. This uppermost part of the nasal pyramid blends into the facial structure, seamlessly connecting the nose to the forehead. The anterior surface includes the bridge of the nose, a prominent feature extending from the root down to the nasal tip. This surface is often the most noticeable aspect of the nose and varies greatly in shape and size among different individuals, contributing significantly to the uniqueness of each person's facial features. The lateral surfaces, found on either side of the nose, span from the bridge to the ailey. These surfaces contribute to the width and overall contour of the nose, playing a significant role in the side profile of the face. The posterior surface, although conceptual, represents an important boundary between the external nose and the internal nasal cavities. This surface delineates the transition from the visible, external structure of the nose to the internal pathways that are essential for respiration and olfaction. Each of these surfaces and boundaries of the nasal pyramid is intricately designed, contributing to both the functional and aesthetic aspects of the nose. They work together to protect the nasal cavities, support the respiratory system, and play a crucial role in defining the appearance of the human face. The structural integrity of the external nose, or nasal pyramid, is a result of a sophisticated blend of bony and cartilaginous components, each playing a vital role in its form and function. Central to its support system is the nasal septum, located in the midline. The nasal septum is pivotal in maintaining the structural integrity and symmetry of the nose, dividing the nasal cavity into two separate passageways and providing a foundation for the other nasal structures. The bony component, forming the upper third of the nasal pyramid, is crucial for the overall shape and strength of the nose. This bony portion comprises three key bones. The nasal bone consists of a pair of symmetrical, flat, and oblong bones. These bones are integral in forming the recognizable bridge of the nose, a distinct feature that extends from the root of the nose down towards its middle section. The superior borders of these nasal bones create this bridge, while their inferior borders seamlessly connect with the nasal cartilages. This connection is critical, as it delineates the superior margin of the nasal cavity, marking the transition from bone to cartilage. These rectangular-shaped bones are meticulously aligned at the midline, joining together to contribute to the formation of the upper bony part of the nasal septum. This union is vital for the structural symmetry and stability of the nose, ensuring that the nasal pyramid maintains its shape and function effectively. The bony component of the nasal pyramid is not only defined by the nasal bones but also includes other key elements like the frontal process of the maxilla, each contributing to the overall structure and functionality of the nose. The frontal process of the maxilla is an essential aspect of the nasal structure. Originating from the maxilla, which is one of the primary bones of the face, the frontal process is a robust vertical plate that projects upward. 
This projection plays a pivotal role in shaping the lateral wall of the nasal cavity, contributing to the overall framework and stability of the nasal structure. Besides its structural role, the frontal process of the maxilla serves a crucial functional purpose as well. It acts as an attachment point for several facial muscles. The integration of the frontal process of the maxilla into the nasal pyramid exemplifies the complexity of the facial skeleton. Its dual role in both providing structural support and serving as a muscle attachment point highlights the multifaceted nature of the nasal anatomy, where each component is intricately connected and serves multiple purposes, contributing to the overall form, function, and aesthetics of the face. The bony component of the nasal pyramid is further characterized by the involvement of the frontal bone. At the nasofrontal suture, a critical juncture in the facial skeleton, the nasal bones meet and fuse with the nasal part of the frontal bone. This suture is located where the upper part of the nasal structure connects with the forehead, playing a pivotal role in defining the upper limit and contour of the nose. The nasal part of the frontal bone contributes significantly to the formation of the root of the nose. This area is where the nose blends into the forehead, a region that is not only important for structural integrity but also for the aesthetic appearance of the face. The smooth transition at this junction is crucial for the symmetry and balance of the facial features. The cartilaginous component of the nasal pyramid, constituting the lower two-thirds of the structure, is a vital aspect of the nasal anatomy, primarily formed from hyaline cartilage. This part of the nose is responsible for its flexibility and shape, and includes five distinct types of cartilages, each playing a specific role. The septal cartilage, also known as the quadrangular cartilage, is a prominent feature in this cartilaginous system. As a large, flat, single midline cartilage, it forms most of the anterior part of the nasal septum. The septum is a crucial element in nasal anatomy, dividing the nasal cavity into two nostrils. This division is essential for proper nasal function, including airflow and support of the nose's overall structure. The septal cartilage extends from the nasal bones at the upper part of the nose down to the columella at the base. The upper connection to the nasal bones ensures a seamless transition from the bony to the cartilaginous structure, providing stability and continuity. Superiorly, the septal cartilage connects to the lateral cartilages. Inferiorly, the septal cartilage attaches to the anterior nasal spine, a bony projection of the maxilla. This connection is crucial in providing a firm base for the cartilage, supporting the lower part of the nose and maintaining its projection and alignment. Additionally to the septal cartilage, the cartilaginous component of the nasal pyramid is further defined by the lateral nasal cartilages, which play a critical role in the structure and appearance of the nose. The lateral nasal cartilages are a pair of flattened, triangular-shaped cartilages situated below the inferior margin of the nasal bones. Their strategic placement and shape are crucial for the contour and stability of the nose, particularly in its middle third. These cartilages are intricately connected to other structures of the nose. Anteriorly, their margins are continuous with the septal cartilage above. This continuity is essential for maintaining the integrity and alignment of the nasal septum, ensuring that the nose maintains its shape and functions properly in terms of air passage and filtration. Superiorly, the lateral nasal cartilages are attached to the nasal bones and the frontal process of the maxilla. This attachment is significant as it provides a secure anchor to the bony framework of the nose. Inferiorly, the lateral nasal cartilages are connected to the greater alar cartilages by fibrous tissue. This connection allows for a degree of flexibility and movement which is necessary for the functionality of the nose, particularly during facial expressions and breathing. Functionally, these cartilages extend laterally, forming the sides of the nose. They are instrumental in defining the shape of the nose's middle third, contributing to the characteristic appearance of the nasal profile. The lateral nasal cartilages are key in determining the width and contour of this area, playing a significant role in the aesthetic aspect of the nose. Moreover, the cartilaginous component of the nasal pyramid is further detailed by the inclusion of major alar cartilage, minor alar cartilage, and accessory nasal cartilages, each contributing to the nose's unique structure and functionality. The major alar cartilage, also known as the lower lateral cartilages, is a key element in this structure. These cartilages are characterized by their thin and flexible nature, each resembling a pair of parentheses in shape. This specific design allows them to border the corresponding nostril opening. 
The flexibility and resilience of these cartilages are essential for the functionality of the nostrils, especially in terms of their ability to expand and contract during breathing. These cartilages extend from the piriform aperture to the anterior nasal spine. Their unique structure involves bending in on themselves, thereby forming both the medial and lateral walls of the nose. This characteristic bending is vital for the overall shape and projection of the nose, especially in the lower third region. At their anteriormost extent, the major alar cartilage is sharply recurved to contribute to the nasal septum. Specifically, they form what is known as the septal process. This part of the cartilage is integral to the structure of the septum, contributing to its stability and shape. The nasal structure also includes minor alar cartilage and accessory nasal cartilages. These smaller cartilages play a role in refining the shape and structure of the nose, particularly in the alar region. They provide additional support and contouring, enhancing the overall aesthetics of the nose. In addition to these cartilaginous structures, the external nose contains fibrofatty tissue, especially around the alar region. This tissue adds to the softness and pliability of the nostrils, contributing to the nose's flexibility and resilience. The presence of this fibrofatty tissue is crucial for the comfortable movement and functionality of the nose, particularly in facial expressions and breathing. The nasal vestibule represents a critical transitional area within the nasal anatomy, functioning as the foremost part of the nasal cavity and serving as an essential component in the respiratory system. Located just inside the nostrils, the nasal vestibule marks the entry point into the nasal cavity. This positioning is crucial as it acts as the first line of defense for the respiratory system, filtering and processing the air that enters the nose. Structurally, the vestibule is enclosed by the nasal cartilages, which play a significant role in its shape and stability. These cartilages, including the major and minor alar cartilages, give the vestibule its distinctive form and contribute to its ability to maintain an open passage for airflow. The vestibule extends from the nares, nostril openings, to the limen nosi, an internal area marking the transition from the vestibule to the rest of the nasal cavity. This extension is important for creating a smooth and efficient pathway for air to travel into the deeper parts of the respiratory system. Unlike the rest of the nasal cavity, which is lined with respiratory epithelium, the vestibule has a distinct lining of skin-like stratified squamous, keratinized epithelium. This type of epithelium is similar to that found on the skin's surface, equipped with hair follicles, sebaceous glands, and small hairs known as vibrissae. The vibrissae are particularly significant as they act as a natural filter. They trap dust, pollen, and other large particles from the air entering the respiratory system, preventing these particles from reaching the sensitive areas of the lungs. This filtering mechanism is essential in safeguarding the respiratory tract from potential irritants and pathogens. In summary, the nasal vestibule serves as a vital component in the nasal anatomy, bridging the external environment with the internal respiratory system. Its strategic location, unique lining, and the presence of vibrissae underscore its role in air filtration and respiratory protection. Regarding the external nasal muscles, it is a group of small but functionally significant muscles associated with the external nose, playing a key role in facial expressions and the movements of the nose. These muscles, innervated by branches of the facial nerve, contribute to the dynamic aspect of facial anatomy. The nasalis muscle is one of the primary muscles in this group. It consists of two parts, the transverse part and the alar part. The transverse part compresses the nasal aperture, reducing the size of the nostrils, while the alar part dilates the nostrils, aiding in deep inhalation. This muscle is crucial for regulating airflow through the nasal passages. The dilator naris muscle, also part of this group, is specifically involved in the dilation of the nostrils. This action is especially important during deep breathing, physical exertion, or heightened emotional states where increased airflow is necessary. The depressor septi nosi muscle plays a role in lowering the nasal septum. The levator labii superioris alique nosi muscle is unique in its dual function. It elevates the upper lip and dilates the nostrils. Its contribution to facial expressions is particularly evident in emotions that require the elevation of the upper lip and the proserous muscle, located between the eyebrows, draws down the medial angle of the eyebrows and produces transverse wrinkles over the bridge of the nose. It is often engaged in expressions of frowning or concentration, adding to the range of human facial expressions. 
The morphology of the external nose is characterized by several distinct anatomical features, each contributing to its unique shape and function, the dorsum or ridge, this is the vertical component of the nose that extends from the root down to the tip. The dorsum is a prominent feature that contributes significantly to the profile of the nose, influencing its overall length and shape. The bridge, the bridge is the upper part of the nose, formed by the nasal bones. It is located between the eyes and extends to where the bone transitions to cartilage. The shape and size of the bridge play a crucial role in the aesthetic appearance of the nose and the face. The root, located at the top of the nose, the root is where the nose meets the forehead. This area, known as the nasion, is where the nasal bones connect with the frontal bone, contributing to the starting point of the nasal dorsum. The nasofacial angle, this angle is formed by the intersection of the lines drawn from the forehead to the root of the nose and from the root down the dorsum. It is an important aesthetic marker that influences the perceived protrusion or flatness of the nose. The nasal tip, it is the most forward projecting part of the nose and is formed by the lower lateral cartilages. Its shape is crucial in determining the overall appearance of the nose and can vary greatly between individuals. The nostrils or nares, these are the two openings at the base of the nose, leading into the nasal cavity. Their shape, size, and symmetry are important both for breathing function and aesthetic balance. The columella, the strip of tissue that separates the nostrils, extending from the nasal tip to the nasal base. It supports the nasal tip and is visible from the side profile, contributing to the angle and definition of the nose. The nasal ali, these are the outer sides of the nostrils, made up of cartilage and soft tissue. The ali form the lateral boundaries of the nostrils and contribute to the width and overall shape of the nose. The nasal base, this is the bottom part of the nose where the nostrils and columella meet. The shape and width of the nasal base contribute to the overall proportion and balance of the nose in relation to the face. And the nasofacial sulcus, this is the groove or angle where the ali of the nose meet the cheeks. It defines the lateral limit of the nose and contributes to the definition and contour of the nasal area in relation to the cheeks. Each of these anatomical features plays a vital role in the morphology of the nose, contributing to its functionality in respiration and olfaction, as well as its aesthetic appearance in the context of facial symmetry and balance. Now, delving into the blood supply, the arterial supply and venous drainage of the nose are essential components of its vascular system, ensuring efficient blood flow and contributing to the overall health and function of the nasal tissues. The primary blood supply to the nose is provided by branches of the facial artery. These branches include the alar artery. This artery supplies blood to the alar part of the nose, which includes the nasal ali and the adjacent areas. It plays a crucial role in providing oxygenated blood to the lower lateral parts of the nose. The septal artery, the septal artery is responsible for supplying blood to the nasal septum. And the angular artery, this artery, which anastomoses with the dorsal nasal artery, is significant in providing blood to the upper part of the nose, including the bridge and the dorsum. The anastomosis with the dorsal nasal artery ensures a rich blood supply to these areas, essential for the skin and underlying structures. The venous drainage of the nose is particularly rich at the level of the tip of the nose and includes the alar vein, draining the same region as the alar artery. The alar vein plays a key role in removing deoxygenated blood from the lower lateral parts of the nose. The dorsal nasal vein, this vein drains the upper part of the nose, particularly the dorsum and the bridge. These veins primarily drain into the facial vein and the angular vein. The efficient venous drainage is crucial for preventing blood pooling and maintaining proper blood circulation in the nasal tissues. The lymphatic system of the nose plays a vital role in immune surveillance and fluid balance. The primary lymphatic drainage from the nasal region is directed towards the submandibular lymph nodes. These nodes, located beneath the jaw, receive lymph from the nasal tissues. They are important in filtering lymphatic fluid and trapping pathogens, playing a crucial role in immune responses against infections that may affect the nasal area. The parotid lymph nodes, located near the parotid gland, around the ear and the upper cheeks, these lymph nodes also contribute to the lymphatic drainage of the nose. They assist in immune function and are involved in the drainage of lymphatic fluid from the nasal tissues, particularly those near the upper part of the nose. The nerve supply to the nose is essential for its sensory and motor functions. The motor innervation of the nose is provided by branches of the facial nerve. 
This nerve is responsible for controlling the movements of the external nasal muscles, which contribute to facial expressions and slight adjustments in the shape of the nostrils, aiding in respiratory functions. The sensory innervation to the nose is primarily supplied by branches of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Key sensory nerves include, the infratrochlear nerve, this nerve provides sensation to the area near the bridge of the nose, contributing to the sensory perception of this region. And the anterior ethmoidal nerve, it supplies sensation to the upper part of the nasal cavity and adjacent areas. This nerve is crucial for the sensory feedback from the nasal mucosa, which is important for reflexes like sneezing and for the perception of irritants. In conclusion, the nasal pyramid's complex structure, encompassing both bony and cartilaginous elements, along with its overlying skin, not only defines a key aspect of facial anatomy but also plays a significant role in respiratory function and facial aesthetics. The upper third of the nasal pyramid provides the primary structural support and is composed of the nasal bones and the frontal processes of the maxilla. These bony structures define the bridge of the nose, contributing to its strength and shape. They are crucial in maintaining the overall framework and stability of the nose, especially in the context of its projection and alignment with the rest of the facial features. In contrast, the lower two-thirds of the nose are responsible for its flexibility and distinctive contour. This part of the nasal pyramid consists of various cartilages, including the septal, lateral, and alar cartilages. The septal cartilage forms the central support and divides the nasal cavity, while the lateral and alar cartilages shape the sides and the tip of the nose, respectively. This cartilaginous structure allows for a certain degree of flexibility and resilience, crucial for the nose's adaptability and function. The skin overlying the nasal pyramid also plays a vital role in its overall characteristics. It varies in thickness across different parts of the nose, being thinner over the bony bridge and progressively thicker towards the ailey. In the alar region, the skin is enriched with sebaceous glands, contributing to its texture and appearance. This variation in skin thickness and composition is important for both the protective function of the skin and the aesthetic aspects of the nose. Clinically, the nasal pyramid is a frequent site of injury, particularly in cases of mid-face blunt trauma. Such injuries can have significant implications, as they may affect both the bony and cartilaginous components of the nose. Nasal fractures can lead to functional issues, including breathing difficulties and altered olfaction, due to disruptions in the nasal structure and airway obstruction. Furthermore, these injuries often have considerable aesthetic repercussions, potentially altering the shape and appearance of the nose, which can have psychological and social impacts on the affected individual.